All right, Pokemon players, we are back with the top four. We have Kieran versus Edward. We're going to see a YZG versus Metal for the start here. And we have not seen too much YZG on stream here in the Masters Division. We've seen a couple of variants. Oh, we saw Andrew Estrada play, and we saw seen a couple in seniors. And we, it hasn't been doing too great on stream, but there was one that did squeak into the top cut in Masters, and it actually beat a Mega Manetric deck in top eight to get here. And now the interesting thing here is Kiernan is playing Metal, but as you saw from his starting hand, he is actually playing Max Wixers in his build, unlike Matthew Ku, so he should be able to get a little bit of a faster start. Yeah, if he's going to go for that faster start, I mean, like, as we saw yesterday, it really didn't work against the Trainer Lock deck, but regularly, it would be really nice to get that energy acceleration faster. Yeah, especially against YZG, which is a deck that can have issues if it has to start dealing with big EXs that do 110 damage without filling up their bench, because the deck really does not do too great against anything that does 110, particularly 130 quickly, right. as then the Voltals get KO quick. Right, and if Kieran doesn't have to fill up his bench, that's just going to be super helpful. Although we do see a turn one Maxi Gallade out of Edwards, so that's huge here. He's going to be able to just you know, control his top decks, apply pressure, and again, Gallade just a tough card deal because it's a non-EX that has 150 HP, and you don't really want to waste your time dealing with it because it's just an axe. And it is a really good attacker. I mean, yeah. you're going to do a great amount of damage. So it does, uh, will it one-shot the Bronzong? Yes, it will one-shot the Bronzong so. break. It does have just 130 HP, so with a Lysander, Sensitive Blade will be doing 130, and he also does play Muscle Band, so he can hit up to 150 with Gallade which is not a super relevant number all the time in most matches, but nice to know. And he did have to burn two puzzles early. We see him two more off of... He is premonishing there. Premonishing, yes. Yeah, he's already got DCE and Sycamore's hand, so... So he does also have a Sycamore for next turn as well, so he's doing perfectly fine. He's yeah. doing exactly what he wants to do so on his first turn. Exactly what YCG wants to do, and again, getting a turn one maxi is... Been a little tougher in standards, but there's been several builds of the deck that have only been playing like a 1-1 one, one maxi, or a lot of the Volta's Orcs have been cutting Gallade altogether, and we see him, he's playing a 2-2 two, two maxi Gallade, same as Estrada was playing, and again, you see it's a lot easier to get that turn one Gallade and apply right. instant pressure turn two. Well, and you definitely, the hardest part about why that it's harder to get the Gallade out is that you're playing Evolves, it's not like the Blastoise deck that we saw at Worlds last year that we just were able to dump a lot of cards. You're, there are things that are not as easily to dump right out of your hand with the Zorark and the deck. Exactly, and you don't want to dump all your resources either. You also don't have right. superior energy retrieval, which is another out discard outlet. Huge. And the big thing is that in a meta that was very, very warped by Night March is you really wanted to be able to play three Oblivion Wings and a heavier Zorark count somewhere in playing the Zorark break. So the Glade just, you know, you didn't... It, to get turn blade, you sometimes had to bench more chance, so you just, you know, were trimming down things and making right. your build better against Night March. But as we saw here in Canada, Night March didn't really show up, so these 2-2... We didn't two, see two, very much at all. Yeah, so these 2-2 two, two Maxi Glade decks are doing a lot better than maybe the ones more similar to Kevin Baxter's list that was really just designed to beat Night March and not much else. Correct. And there just seems to be... The Night March is a big show in the U.S., and here in Canada, it just it didn't make it. And yeah, maybe, it, maybe more decks were... Used, we saw a lot of Jirachi play last game. They're just teching against it, right? You see right. it everywhere, so... Maybe it's not doing as well because there are so many people teching for yeah, it. Yeah, everyone is saying, look, I am tired of losing to the deck. Though. We've seen Jirachis, we've seen a lot of Water Toolbox, which with Quaking Punch has a fairly strong matchup against it. Right. Then we've seen, you know, we saw a decent amount of Greninja on stream. And again, even still, these 2-2 two -two Maxi Glade decks still aren't bad against Night March. You just have to, you know, be careful about your Shaman Drops and hope you don't get targeted with sort of anything. Right. Now, the Metal deck, I'm not sure how it does against it. I haven't tested the matchup, but... I it's, imagine Bronzong Break helps it a little it's bit. It's fairly a uh, difficult matchup just simply because the Genesects are the resistant to the Psychic, and that is just really huge. So you're really fighting with the Joltic, but it's really easy to knock out with a Sky Return if you're yeah. not having the Fighting Fury Belt. Well, so it's actually pretty hard of a matchup for right. it. Right, and you've got the Fury Belts too, so you're able to get up to that 220 HP quickly, so Pumpkaboos aren't able to one-shot you, right. and, you know, Joltics have to get the 11 in a discard, and it's you really have to tough. run incredibly right. well to beat it. And Again, we've seen some of the metal decks, they do play these Max Luxers so they can get to a quick start. KO your first DCE. We saw Matthew Kuhl was playing Jirachi in his build. I'm not sure if Kieran plays Jirachi in his, but you know, they've got solid outs They're, to beat the deck. Right, so that's the big reason that we're, we are seeing these two decks here today. So what do you think the matchup here for these two decks particular between each other? Uh, so I think the big thing here is now metal has always been a deck that traditionally has to fill a bench. So that makes you a little weaker against Zorark. Mm -hmm. So that's huge. And 
a lot of it also does shift on whether or not he gets Goliath out. Like, playing wise with you lot, a lot of your matchups become either a lot more positive if you are able to get Goliath out. We saw that he beat a Mega Manetric in his top eight, so he had to get, he has to get Goliath out in that matchup. So, just getting Goliath out swings a lot of things. But I would say the metal is probably favored because if you're able to charge up a Genesect with Max Elixirs and you don't have to bench, filter your bench, you're able to do this 110 very quickly. And... You know, as a, you're not, YZG is not good against that. Like, if I'm, you're dealing with a quick 110, they're mowing through Zorargs and Baby Evolves right, quickly. Easy. And but do you think, Edward, he did, we haven't seen anything yet, but does he play the Evil Tall EX, or and uh, do you think that, I mean, you look at the energies, right? You yeah. are able to attack if the Genesec has a full amount of energy on it, that's mm -hmm. going to be good, doing yeah. a good amount of damage, because that's particularly what he's going to need to be able to tank a shot. Exactly, right. The other thing is, so if you're Kieran and you might still discard energies to avoid you Volta X, I cannot tell if he plays it. He does play Drudion and at the very least, so that helps him against change, but I would say if he plays Evolta X, he probably plays one Evolta one. X. So Edward's deck is more Zorak Glade as then, focused than YZG. Yeah. He's going to play one Evolta, but it's not what he's going to be attacking exactly. with. He's looking to attack with the Zorak. Exactly. So we're gonna see him. He's gonna hex. He's gonna hex Kiernan, hoping to slow him down. And and he also got the knockout with the Glade, so that's perfect for him. That's yeah. exactly what he wants. Kills to Kills the Bronzor, just trying to take the cheap prizes and deal with these big threats later. And I'm presuming next turn he'll be able to start doing some actual damage to these Genesects. So we see a Trainer's Mill here. Looks like a Max Elixir. So he's gonna be able to Max Elixir to that backup Genesect, assuming he hits it, and then hopefully attach a Melt to the active to. Actually, one shot this Glade if, if he chooses to. That's the thing here is with Genesect, you've, you've always got that option. You have the choice. I feel like he he wants to go and fight and knock out that Glade because he's got a short amount of bench. He doesn't have as many on there, yeah. so Azorak's not going to be that much of a threat. Exactly, going and back. you see him hitting that Max Elixir. That helps. He now only needs the one Bronze on to be able to continue to, right yeah, back exactly. out with another Bronze on if, or I'm sorry, with another Genesect if Edward is able to knock out the active yeah. one. So. This is looking really good for Kieran. He's yeah. got he's in a good position. Yeah, he got the, he got a great response to this turn one glade, and he's been able to respond pretty well. He's he's gonna lose a bronze or maybe a second one in the process. But again, you want to make these sacrifices because YZG doesn't oh, he's do a lot of damage. Attach the muscle, muscle band, band. So too. He's doing, so. so let's see here, one twenty. So he still he still discarded uh, two, two two metals to get that KO, and he benches in our bronze ore. So Zorark on the return back, assuming he's able to hit it, is gonna be doing. Oh, he's oh, going to AZ, that and that's huge. Yeah. And again, the big thing here, oh, oh he's going to bench my guys. just going to set up AZ. and draw more cards. He just played a yep. Shaman after a Hex Maniac, so they're going to yeah. hopefully... Okay. Oh, they're... Okay, the okay, they are catching oh, so it for catch him. It. Oh, so we're going to... Oh, see, so he did look at his hand, so we're going to see... That Shaman is definitely going to be stuck there, and yeah, I think he... Yeah, that was a, a really bad misplay for Kieran. That's yeah. not good for him. Yeah, so that's huge, and that's... Kind of what Zorak preys on almost is like, right. you know, we got a shaman there. Okay, we can deal with Shaman, and this Genesec right. is going to be hurting because he's going to have to. You, you have to discard two energies here. If you, you commit, you got to discard these two energies. Correct. KO this Gallade. Especially after that play. He, yeah. Look at him. You can see that he's clearly upset with himself. Yeah. He's like, I just put the shaman down. I'm taking more damage. I now cannot, you know, draw yeah. from it. In his hand, he looks like he has a hex. Yeah, his hand is, complete, two cards his hand is completely dead. So yeah. he needed the AZ that chamber. He needed to hold it for he a turn. He needed to keep it in. Oh, this is not good for him. So he's, Hopefully he'll be able to recover from it. We'll yeah. see what he draws. Yeah, he's but. really hoping he draws. He's got, so he's got two cards he's going to draw. He's going to be drawing one out of the prizes and one off his top deck. So he's really hoping he can hit like a Pia Seeker or a Supporter. He has good odds to be able to come out of it. But it's just unfortunate for him that that happened. He did not want that to yeah, be that's the case. Very bad. And lucky for Edward, I mean, that's something that's really it's helpful for him. Great for him. Right. Yeah, he's got, uh, uh, so Edward here, he's got an opportunity to KO a Shaman if he chooses to take it. He's, uh, he hits a DC, which is nice. He, uh, he, you see him kind of... I feel okay. like he's going to consider the Ultra Ball to get the Zorar and right. attach the DC to the yeah, bench and just Exactly, he's just going to stick him more, yeah. Right. He did, he did have that opportunity if you want to take it. I think you can definitely make the argument for because, again, he does play AZ, and mm -hmm. that's huge because this deck is not particularly great at two for wanting Genesex. Yeah, I feel like, though, Edward in that position, he's going to be okay with taking the turn. If the Shaman is on the bench right, right. now, and if Kieran is going to waste a turn of AZ yeah, with the yeah, supporter, it's fine, right. I think that that's, Edward's like, I'm still okay fine. with that. Yeah, yeah. he's still in a so, good board state here. Like, his game plan right now is probably to KO a Genesect to one bronze ore and then probably a shaman yeah, that's, that's his current game plan and you're gonna have direction to, he wants to go and you're going to have to smash it with my jack at least twice so might as well get one out of the way you're doing at the moment it looks like 
Let's see, one, one thirty. One forty. Oh, sorry, yeah, one thirty. Yeah, one thirty right now. So that again, that actually lets a baby a vocal potential one shot with an oblivion wing and a muscle band. Yeah. So. Hopefully he'll be able to, his hand, he's got an ultra ball, yeah. and he does have the baby of Elton, Yeah, so. well, I was going to say, we did see target whistle in his deck, so the other thing is, I'm pretty sure he could target whistle a bronze or and hit a band here to get the one shot if he drew all those cards. Lee Dancer's just going to hit for 130. And, that's, and he's okay with yeah, that. That's a great amount of damage. He's got, uh, yeah, Kieran's got essentially a pretty Kieran just picked up hand. the muscle band off, oh, that's part of his, uh, yeah, yeah, ability. Yeah, okay, so drive he change. Okay, so. And he drew... His prize was not good, his top deck was not good, and yeah. He's just passing. So this is great for Edward. Yeah. The, and that chip damage, he has the turns to be able to do it now, as we see from the misplay that Kieran had done. So Yeah, Kieran has really hurt himself there. He's not going to be able to, he's not going to be able to, uh, he's not really going to be able to play Pokemon this game, it looks like. He's going to yeah. end up kind of just sitting here watching these baby Voltals and these Zor Zorarks kind of just mow him down at the moment. So right. really unfortunate for Kieran. And it looks like he's got, yeah, he's going to actually have another Maxi Golite as well. As we're seeing his hand, he's got That's a dark. Even yeah, he's, got for another, him. Yeah, he's got dark energy that he'll attach to Baby of Altul, and he's going to be able to maxi, and he's going to be able to open an unknown on the bench. So he's going to be able to control his top deck. If he wants to draw that card, he's going to be able to premonition and draw it with the unknown. That's perfect for him. That's exactly what Edward wants to see. Exactly. So what we're seeing of Edward is. Um, a YCG list that's a lot closer to the cities list that we were seeing where they're playing the unknowns, they're playing the acrobikes, they're going a lot more for the Glade, whereas like recently they were more of a Y, Z, and a little G, like the Glade was more of just, you know, it's in there, it but, a helpful tech. yeah, it you don't get it out you. too consistently, but now this is a lot more, I suppose, like, all right, this is Y, Z, G, like, I'm going for this max, I'm going for this Glade, and he does play the Dragon though, which is... Which was not always in those lists, but yeah, this is much more. But it more. was also very helpful too. Yeah. When you came, I mean, you could hit it at the perfect time, and Kale it really shaming. does. Yeah. Kale's really a shame for DC. It does a everything you needed to do. Exactly. And so, you see here, he's got another goal. He's gonna be able to premonition and just control his top decks. So we see that here that he's gonna get that knockout, and he's gonna be three prize cards ahead. If Kieran doesn't get anything, I can see Kieran scooping here pretty quickly. And yeah. He's gonna want to move on to the next game. Yeah, the only good news here is that he is able to one-shot back-to-back Zorarks at the moment. So that's a plus. He's got a Hex. So he's not completely out of this game yet, yes. but he's been in happier places. This is true. Like, And we don't see a Zorark or an Ultra Ball in Edward's hand, so... You know, uh, I didn't catch what that prize was, if no, it was something that's going to uh, make a difference. Oh, so he hits a target whistle, so Zork will do more damage if he can get one out. He's going through his discard, figuring out what he's got there. I, know, let's see, I see a baby belt hole, I see target whistle, I see a muscle band, I, I see did an end. Actually, did Edward premonition last game, yeah. last turn? I didn't yeah. catch that. He did it su yeah, he, super quick, so. He did it super quick. I'm not sure what, I think he made target whistle his top deck, okay. I believe. So he opted not to target whistle anything in that last turn. Yeah, so correct. he's looking to wait for it yeah, for he's a good gonna, time to exactly. get something exactly like a surprise. Surprise uh, for thing. it. Mm -hmm. right. And it looks like he's going to just Oblivion Wing to Glade and That's take his time. That's going to set up for himself to get the knockout. Right, because it does, it, numbers line right. up great. It does 50 and then Glade does 130, so he just has the VSC. He can play any supporter. He'll be able to kill yeah. the active. And if you're Kiernan, you can't really not have this just active. Yeah, because you have nothing else that can do any... Any damage. Mm -hmm. Right, so. he has no more attackers. Um, uh, we do see that Kieran does have an end in his hand, though, so he might be considering playing it here to try to make get rid Edward's of the hands. Right. Yeah, it, reset, it resets Edward's deck, which is a good thing here. The issue is, is like, even though Kieran hasn't really done anything, he's still awkwardly taken two prizes, so he's not even drawing that many off the right. end. Right, which isn't that bad, I mean... It could be worse, but it's just a little annoying because his board isn't really developed at all, so you would like to be able to, to draw that. more cards here. Yeah, right. He's going to end, though. Like, he's definitely ending but here. He does. He can end and get a Shaman, and even though it's not the direction that he wants to go, he obviously doesn't want to play the bench yeah. Pokemon. He's still at least able to keep and, going. Yeah, and at this point... And once he gets the Bronzongs, he doesn't really mind exactly. the, how much damage... And at this point, the Zorks are doing enough damage that even if you don't they're bench gonna, anything, they're going to do it. And you, you have a Glade. That's the big thing is, like, yeah. Glade just does 130 and doesn't really... It's weird to KO, so it, you have to be aggressive here. You have right, to try to sure. plow through everything. The only issue I feel here, too, though, Kieran's going to be ending, um, but Edwards went through a lot of his decks, so the cards that he have, has left are pretty consistent yeah. to get what he wants. He wants to see the back of his target whistle. He's going to be able to premonition. He's got the unknown. He's yeah. going to be able to be getting out exactly. of those Exactly. He's got so free draws. Right. It's not going to hurt him as much as it, normally it could hurt Kieran. 
Yeah. yeah. Particularly. Uh, he looks like he has gone through a lot of deck two. Yeah. He doesn't seem to have a ton of cards left, but he did also get a bronze on, so this is good yeah. for him. To be able to melons and try to get up that third Genesec the action. Uh, so right now he's looking at he's going looking at KOing this evolved game down to three prizes. Now the, his line of winning is most likely going to involve this third Genesec KOing at least this Zorog that's about the Zorg or Delay that's about to KO his Genesec and then he's uh, so what Edward's doing, he's debating whether or not he's going to premonition before or after the end. I think you just end here for you. Yeah, I would end and then premonition. Because you're gonna want to end here in a novice hand anyway, so end premonition, and then hold, you don't. Most of the cards you are looking for are high high count cards. You're looking for either a face any any energy here does the deal for you with Goliad, and a Zorak gives you the KO with the Zorak. Now, if you're Kiernan, you're, what you're going for is if he whiffs this turn, you're in a very good spot. You're going to be able to take a free prize, get down to two prizes, and then you're trading even because he can't really one shot Genesect. And this is really good for him. Oh, right, he does hit an Ultra Ball, and he's figuring out if he has another Zork in deck. I'm not sure what Zork one is. I think it's a 3-3. Three, 3-3 three. Three, three looks like what it probably could be, but we haven't really seen. Yeah, because there's well, there's two Zorgs in this card. Two, I only saw the one, so I wasn't too sure. Yeah, I think I saw two Zorgs in there. I'm assuming he's running a 3-3. Three, 2-2 three. Like, two, two is pretty incredibly light. Like, it was fine at the start stage, but that's stuff. Right, so he's got Premonition first. Uh, yeah, so he does have the Zork. He does have Zork, so he's going to be able to just... He can set it on top and use the unknown no. to draw already. And then you'll have the DCE for next turn on the Glade if he wants it. So I think he might set it up as to be like Zorark DCE is what he's likely going to set up his top decks to be. Right, because he has the Fia Secret in his hand, so he can use it to Lysander. Well, Lysander for Shaman, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that's the, that's the that's thing. That's the play that he wants to see. And that's fundamentally why YZG is such a good deck. Is Your deck is just very, very good at KO and Shaman. See, he, uh, he looks like he puts... He could have possibly, I think it was a puzzle of time that it looked like he put on the second card. It was, he swamped through them. It was between the DC right. and the puzzle of time, so I'm not sure. Hopefully so, he did he put the DC. He didn't, I'm not sure. Wait, he's, okay, he's oh, so that's a Fury Belt. Okay, so that's why he's not able to get the one shot. Oh, yet. he's not able to get the one shot, so that's, that's okay. Okay, he's so he's not able to do that. Okay, that's why, that's why he didn't and just get the He didn't have a dark energy to no, be able to No, he just had DC. Yeah, so, he's gonna go ahead and just so take I his think time. So, at this point, Kieran is might legitimately be the favorite here, as he's going to be able to one-shot this, yeah, he's going to be able to one-shot this Evolpul, and take down two prizes, and then Edward is going to presumably one-shot any X, and then we're going to be down to Kieran's an end. Kieran's going to come back through it, yeah, absolutely, so this is actually very interesting to see and what's going to happen. And again, if Kieran can do something like hit a VSC for an AZ, and get that chain off the board, you know, he's going to be in a good spot. Now, the good thing here is all Edward needs to do hit back-to-back, -back. it's hit a Y Sander at some point. But he needs it back to back Lysanders. That's what he's trying to do. So in premonition here, we got DC. Right, so he's got the tools. Uh, he's got he's got the tools to win the game if Kiernan does not reset his deck. Kiernan needs to end next turn or he loses. Because what Edward's gonna be able to do here is he's gonna be able to VS Seeker and KO either Genesect or the Shaman here. Shaman right and then now. he's got DC on top, followed by a VS Seeker, so he'll be able to unknown to draw the extra card. Correct. So Kiernan needs to reset Edward's deck in some way to actually be able to win this game. If there's the Lysander. Yeah, he's gonna go ahead and Lysander. He's trying to decide. He's you, gonna choose yeah. the Genesect. He's gonna kill Genesect because that's an attacker. So mm -hmm. as opposed to just killing a bench sitter, you're killing an attacker and taking two prizes. Mm -hmm. Same thing. Now, okay, yep. So this is not gonna. And one thing we do that is available is Edward still does have that target whistle, so he's going to be able to put down if uh, Kieran decides. Oh, I'm not gonna knock out this aura and just set up somebody that. And we just right, see the so end. So he does, he is able to reset his deck, which is critical, and he, if he didn't do that, he would have lost the game. So Edward right now, he he's looking to hit an energy, and then he's going to have two cards, he's going to draw a total of two to three cards here. He's going to have, he's going to look for an energy, or a VS Seeker, or a Lysander, and his first card that he draws off is end one. And he's going to have that premonition, so he has a very good odds. Yeah. This is... Kieran, even though he ends, Edward has a really good chance yeah, of getting it. Yeah, his deck's pretty thin. He yeah. He's got multiple copies of what he needs. He's got permission. And the big thing here is that unknown is coming in clutch because it lets you control your top deck. Like, he's going to get to draw three cards as opposed to normally two, and one of those cards he's going to have knowledge of what it is. Yeah. And he'll be able to find he'll that missing puzzle choose, piece. Pretty much choose. I think Kieran, when he counted out, it looked like maybe Edward had about uh, so seven got, Oh, so he actually completely okay. got Drew, though. He hit nothing that's actually going. He had an ultra on the target. So both of those cards are pretty bad right now. Yeah. Because they neither neither one fundamentally does anything. So we're gonna have a premonition here, and see. Right, so he's got 
He's wow, probably that's got. That's so unfortunate for him. Yeah, he's working through because he's, he's only got one prize up, and he needs to not die. His so he needs to, regardless, he's going to need the verse seeker here for the last to just not lose the game. Because that genocide can literally KO everything on his side of the table. And he's kind of the knowledge he's trying to. Yeah, he, he needs to he needs to put that Death Seeker on top and draw it this turn with the unknown. And then he's looking to get to target the bronze Bronzor out. Yeah, because it's got two retreats. Right. Unless he the other option is if he has a shaman EX left in deck, which I'm not sure if he does he could draw a card he doesn't care about and then shaman and try to hit all the pieces he needs to in the game. So we're gonna see what he does here. And he premonitions, I'm not sure what he needs. He's gonna farewell letter and I'm yeah, so he's gonna yeah, burst. So maybe Edward doesn't play Shaman. Yeah, or I think I, did he put one in the discard? I'm not sure, but I'm not sure if I remember, but that could be. We'll be able to check here. You see, oh, he only showed us so much of it, but maybe he doesn't play it, and because that was true, if he did have a Shaman left in deck, that he would have been able to pretty much draw everything yeah, exactly. that he needed. So. So yeah, and we, see the and we easy. didn't see it. We didn't see it on the prizes. So. so Kieran's gonna take game one here. Yeah. Uh. It displayed Edward's relatively strong start. And again, that's what I was saying is, uh, generally, even with the Gallade, the Meldex just better off of these late game ends, and that's how Ku was able to win his last yeah, series. it really comes down to that there is just no way to one-shot a Genesect with a Fighting Fury Bell. Oh. I mean, that's just huge. Yeah, you just can't do it. He does play a Megaphone, though. But if you're Edward, you had you had your ideal start here. Mm -hmm. Like, there is... It and was you, really good off. Yeah, and you, it really what came down to the end was just crucial. Yeah, that's and, what it always does. Yeah. That's what it's there for. And and he did drop pretty poor off that end, too. Because mm -hmm. if he hits either one of those puzzle pieces he needs, he's fine. Like, he just didn't hit either an energy or the verse seeker in those two cards right. that he draws for free. And he's he said two cards that were unplayable, and I... And we're still not sure if he plays Shaman X. He might not. Or if he does, he might only play, play one. But like, if he only played one, he would have got there. I don't think and I saw him in the discard. He could have discarded. Yeah, that's, that's something we're not sure, not sure which, which direction it happened. So we'll be able to come back and if there's a second game and see what happens yeah. here. Now, the good news is, is because it's 75 plus 3, we actually still have 50 minutes left to play out these potential last two games, which is generally going to be enough time with that's, plus 3 turns. That's pretty, yeah, that's pretty a good amount of time. And not, these decks aren't, like, again, super fast, but they aren't slow. Like, this is not, like, you know, a Water to Watch Mirror or, like, Rough Seas decks. These are not decks that are, like, trying to, you know, sit around too long. Uh, so, Kieran starts with Shaman, and that's, you know, not where you want to be. You never want to see that. And Edward did get to start with Azura, so. Uh, he's got Baby, uh, he's got Baby Bubble, he got a couple puzzles, the Seeker, Sycamore, Ultra Wallet. Yeah, oh, he's going to get rid of a lot of Sycamore's turn one here, and a puzzle. So, not really what he wants to be doing. He's not going to get a turn one delayed. At all, so I think he might not actually play Shaman because all I've seen out of him so far is Ultra Ball for unknowns. But now he's playing at least three, I believe. He's gonna puzzle and yeah, he's just doing that to look at the top three because right. he kind of played six more no of So we see BCE, Mail, and Arzora, and our puzzle attack. Okay, so not solid start. Like he's got but two Zoras. He's still going. He still stuff. has stuff to go. He's not gonna get the Glade out first, yeah. but we'll have options to get it soon. Yeah, solid start. He's got two Zoras on board, maybe Volatile, Target Whistle, a puzzle in hand, Bloodstone. Yeah, he's doing good. This is, again, pretty close to what you want, but again, we saw him start very explosively last game, and it. It still didn't work out. Yeah, it just. Him. Yeah, Genesis very good against this deck because it's very good at doing 100 damage and not being one shot on right. the turn. Like, it's weak to fire and not dark. So, again, very, very good for Ed Edward. Start though to get the ball. They get an ultra ball, so he'll be able to go back in and get, get some stuff. Yep, He's trying to decide here what he wants to get. Kieran's taking his time here, figuring out what's there. What's there. I would assume it's probably a bronze or a genesect because I don't think he had. Yeah, it's gonna be a genesect here because again, I don't recall his hand being completely dead. And we're gonna see him hey, searching. Big factor we do see here that Kieran does play the Aegis Lash, which you would assume he would. He's playing the metal, but yeah. that could come into play with the DCs. Uh, Edward gets himself in a position where right. he's out of energy, and then he's relying on that DC. Yeah, it's not fun when you're just trying to use darks. Like you just become a lot more inefficient. So again, the deck. The, it's just not fast enough. Yeah, exactly. The deck is trying to be a, an efficient deck that KO Shaman the X, and when it's not able to do that, the deck has a lot of problems. And so we're gonna see him. He's gonna attach to Genesect, and really all he needs, he's got Megaphone with a Floatstone, which actually. To a lot of builds of wise, he's actually pretty detrimental losing votes on, but because Edward plays the puzzles, it's not as bad as right. it could 
Pichu hears he's about to Young Sports and discards a Sigmar he's about to be a seeker and get rid of another puzzle. Oh, he expects an end, but it doesn't help because Kieran's got dead hand, so he's going to have to kind of overextend here, probably. Puzzles, I'm not sure what he's putting on top. There would be no way, way that Edward wouldn't go for the end because he's not going to know that Kieran, oh, he's going to choose to, well, oh, yeah, well, yeah, well, yeah, well, yeah, because okay. Kieran uh, didn't play him, so uh, Kieran just, he's sick of more. He's sick of more, right, but he, after sick more, he didn't do anything, so I think, I think if I'm Edward, you're you're kind of hope you're kind of playing on the like he's not gonna be able to at least do too much to me next turn. That's but, true. So like I think he's it's like a dead hand, but not really. It was like you know he doesn't have ultra balls or anything in his hand or trainers mails. Correct. So you know like at most he's got like a supporter that he'll just support, draw cards he's with. Be using another supporter yeah, exactly. To draw he's got it. supporters and Pokemon, and you're okay letting him have like you're okay letting him have that sick more without being able to play any more cards, and you don't want to give him an extra four cards here. Spell Press Away, Glade, I'm actually, and probably a Wise, uh, Wise Andre as well, just so BS Seeker turns it on. Uh, let's see, so we got the Glade in there. It's also, is this a, he's going to do his first, uh, Spell looking through his first deck search. I mean, he yeah. was able to Ultra Ball earlier, but he didn't do a very good search, so let's see, he's going to go ahead and go through. Yeah, so we are seeing, it looks like he does not actually push in. Yeah, exactly. so, like, I, I didn't see. It's going to be a very interesting thing. But, I mean... Yeah, he's, so he, he's playing Acrobikes and Unknowns to make up for it. Right. He's just, he's, and those are things that you're trading one prize card as opposed to two for a Shaman. That's, exactly. You know, you, again, it's an, if he did play the Shaman, that's another easy yeah, target for yeah. a Genesis. And I also don't did not see Evolta X. So, Edward's actually running a YZG with actually zero EXs. He is running all non-EX attackers, and he's running all non-EX stars. Right? It looks like three or four Unknown and then multiple Acrobikes. So he's just running no no EXs period, even Shaman, and he's just saying, look, I, these unknowns are generally fine. He's probably playing a couple extra supporters to account for that. He's playing a town map as well, so that when he takes prizes, he knows he what he's going to get. Again, he's playing a lot of things that give him the ability to make a lot of, like, auto decisions. Things with the premonition and the unknown, he's going to get to choose off the, the top even. five. Yeah, and that's great. And then being able to choose your prize card, that really makes a difference for your things of yeah, so he getting exactly what you need. Yeah, so need much. Right. And the other thing is, as we were mentioning, is Night March didn't do particularly well, and I could see, like, his build is incredibly well suited to beat Night March. He, he plays, he plays legitimately, legitimately plays zero EX. He's like, yeah. You, yeah, you want to target with one hit? No, you are, there's not even a shaman in my deck. Like, you can't even do that. I didn't even actually see a Fright Knight in his list either. So, so I could, he might even be playing four Yvaltal XY even. So he's just. Really, really consistent. He's, he's only using two attacks. He's using yes. three attacks. He is using Oblivion Wing. He is using Sensitive Blade, and he is using Mind Jack, and that that's all he's doing. Like that's all he's trying to do. And again, against the field, that's not that not necessarily too terrible as long as you run into you know the right matchup. So yeah, see the right Zora. here is going to be a little rough just simply because the Genesect is so yeah, it's so bulky, so big. But again, we see Kieran go in our turn, and like not we're talking anything. and. There wasn't even anything Nothing to commentate on. He happens. just he attached a metal energy, maybe. Like, so Kieran's just drawn pretty poor off of his Sycamores. And we see a Max. Oh, boy. We see another Maxi out of uh, Edward here. So this is his third Maxi in two games. So you see that because he's playing all these unknowns and Hackbikes, he's a little, you know. He's able real, to empty his hand really quick. Yeah. Like, I, again, you usually had to just give, like, a maxi a game, maybe a maxi every two games, even with during the, when you were playing the 2-2 two -two maxi, you just had to, you know, if you get it out during the game, but he had a first turn maxi game one, he had another maxi in that game, and now he's got maxi mid game here, and three maxis in two games is a very high maxi rate. It's 100%. I remember when I had played YZG, I just, my thoughts of me getting it just were not that yeah, often. It just did not, yeah, like, did not happen, and and yeah. he has definitely made his list where he that's wants that. Doing. That's what he wants to do. That's because he did. He's not using the, the X yes. attackers, so that is what he wants to attack with. So exactly. he's going to make that more consistent to get out. And I think the thing that helps him the most is he's playing. I believe he's playing four unknown. So like those are things that are easy to play in your bench, and then they draw your card whenever you want. And that's yeah. the main things I like is that with unknown and Glade is like I love that combination because even when like we were we started cutting unknowns to put in more acrobikes to dig a little further is I like to always have the one unknown just so like at the end of the game I can, if I had Glade I always had that you know I always had that free cantrip yeah, that I know what I'm yeah, drawing yeah it makes you feel more comfortable on the decisions you're gonna make you're like I still have this yeah, as I, an as I a, got as a I got this one card like I'm always gonna get one card I think is good and we see Kieran here he's ending and he finally gets a bronze on the tail 
the big thing here is he is at least he's going to have to discard one or just kill this baby bolt, but he is going to take the first prize. Right, and I think that's actually going to be this way turn around really quick for Kieran because of the fact that Edward, even though he's had a, you know his board looks the way he wants it to look, right? He has a lot of good things on the board, but he's not been taking prize cards, and Kieran yeah. is just. He's slowly loading up that Genesect to be able to just... And the other thing, too, is uh, Kiernan's... For Edward is... Yes, Edward's board is how he wants to be, but Kiernan's board is not how Edward wants it to be. I mean, what I mean by that is that for Zork, you you almost want your opponent to kind of overextend a little bit just so your Zork's actually doing anything, but right now your Zork's doing 70 damage. You're three-shotting this Genesect. Right. And if he puts a free build on it, you're four-shotting him. So, like, yes, your board looks like it does, too, but, you know, Zork does rely on your opponent having to, you know, kind of bench things to do with more damage. Granted, he does have a sensitive blade set up, but as you'll see, he's got three energy on this Bronzong after doing this, so he's able to KO the Glade even after KOing this baby Bolt Hole. And that's going to be really good for him here. And that's where this is the case where I feel like if Edward had played a uh, Tall EX, that, that would have been helpful. It would have been very, would have been good, very good for him. Sure. But Kieran saw most of Edward's deck and he said, yeah, I didn't see one, one, so I'm just going to load this Genesect up. And yeah, yeah, I don't think you can. Good luck trying to kill it. Yeah, exactly. And the other thing that um, Edward also doesn't play that I actually think is that is legitimately my favorite card in, in the game right now is he does not appear to be playing any uh, Pitch Black Spear slash Fright Night Evolve. And that's a card where. When I've been playing against my like, League Challenges, my the two best cards for me in that matchup have always been the Dreddy Gun because it does the cheap 110 to KO Shaman and, you know, the cheap 110 to Genesex. And then, actually, for Pitch Black Spear because they play a lot of tools, so you turn off the tools a lot. And, you know, you get turn two, you know, Pitch Black Spear, you do 60 to a Genesex, 60 to a Shaman, and you slow them down, and right. it's hard for them to actually hit that 130 because if it, either, since their tools aren't, they have to overextend it and discard two energy super quickly on you. And it's a big player. Okay, so he... Edward's a bang playing the reverse style. You might as well just play to get it out of your hand because the card doesn't it, actually do anything yeah, to the numbers. So it just neutrals itself out. Yeah, and if anything, it helps you if you can KO a Shaman, I guess. The, the, the issue is that if he did, Edward could play it, but um, if Edward did want to attack with Blade, uh, the yeah, it does do 10 is still going to reduce the damage. It's going to reduce it by 10, but I don't. If the numbers are still going to. The 130 to 120, I don't think matters in the math because the Zark's going to hit in increments of 30s, so it's going to be either doing 70 or 100, and you're going to be short either way. Yep. So I think I'll just play that down so I don't draw it later, but at the moment he's electing not to play it, and he's got Muscle Band, but again, this is not good, he's doing 90 damage, and he's still 3 shining it, so the 90 damage to that, so he is set up to KO it with Sensitive Blade next turn, if he is able to hit it in our DC. And Kieran's sitting here, he's thinking... I don't know if he has anything else in his hand. Maybe he drew another bad hand off yeah, of that. Yeah, he's drawn really poor this game. Now, I see, I see no, Pokemon. No, he actually has a lot of stuff in his he, hand. He's just trying to decide what he wants yeah, to Yeah, he's trying to not bench things because he knows that, like, Zorark, you can't let it get out of control. Like, it's actually really difficult to play against Zorark in this position because you drew bad, but, like, in a way you were only drawing fine because you weren't drawing things you could do, and now you're up on the right. Oh, yeah, I can do all this stuff, but now that turns on his Zoroarks. And... It's a, tr it's a fine line to walk because you're like, oh, I want to be able to set up and do more things. But at the same time, that means his Zorks are all of a sudden a lot better cards against me. Yep. And right now, they're currently three-shotting you, so it's really tricky to balance them. That's what Kieran is figuring out right now. So, gets the bronze on out, so he's going to be able to mouse. Yeah, he is going to bench that Aegis Slash. Because, again, you're not going to one-shot that. And now, if he hits two, what's he going to first Seeker? Seeker more, it looks like. Doesn't hit Max Elixir. He attaches to that, he's going to metal links to that, and next turn he'll be able to, Age of going to be his next attacker. And this is also going to cause Edward to not be able to just sensitive blade back, because after, um, if the Age Slash doesn't knock out the Glade coming back to it, mm -hmm. he's going to have to make a decision on attacking with someone else. Yeah, well, he could, I think I saw Hex out of Edward, so he could oh, Hex probably. it as well. And again, the, the thing is, is, again, he can take that, he, he's probably going to take that Aegis as his last thing he worries about. He's just going to try to get that Shaman and get that Bronze Bond. Again, like I was saying earlier, it'd be great if he's playing the Pitch Black Spear. Is the last, is the last card in Edward's hand a Hex or is it a Zerosic? I cannot tell. It was hard to tell. I couldn't even I Yeah, couldn't he's not playing, a, it's definitely not a full, I think it's a Hex. I think it's a Hex, I'm not 100% sure. But like I was saying earlier, if he was playing the Pitch Black Spear, he'd be able to turn on, he'd be able to already KO that Shaman and not need the Lysander. So, that's something where like, Again, 
and that's a good amount of chip damage that they would just right. get on the board, and that would have helped them a lot. And the other thing that does is it would allow him to do 90, he would, he would allow him to attach a dark to the Zorark, okay? And you can attach a dark and then do your 100 damage, and then, out of nowhere, you can trigger a uh, Fright Knight and take the two prizes when you want them. And since you've got town map, it's even better because then you get to choose which two cards which you want cards during you your during your right. turn because you're going to, you're going to do that trigger during your turn and drop it. So again, he's not playing the pitch box here, which again, it's not great in stand, but I still think it's good in especially matchups that are playing these big EXs because you don't interact well with them. You're not playing any cards that do really more than 100 damage by themselves. You're you know you're he's you're not if you're not playing Evolve the X, you don't have a good way to deal with it. He's not playing Zorak Break, so his Zorks are always getting one shotted on the return. So. This matchup's just particularly difficult for his build of the deck, even though he gets the Glades out so quickly. He just definitely made his deck more consistent and then didn't tech as much of other stuff. Yeah. And, but it if, in any other matchup, he's fine. He's exactly. able mostly everything. And even in this matchup, you know, Kieran he's still is functional. gonna fine. right. Kieran's going to put Pokemon on his bench. He's just there. It's just hard because of how much hit points the Genesect really does get with the Fighting Fury Bell. Yeah, so. he does also play the Microphone, but he has not been able to hit it at the right time yet, either. Uh, so he's going to elect to attach a DC to Golade, so he's just going to get that guaranteed KO. Go ahead and get it. And then he will be able to have the Zorark as a backup attacker yeah. for his next turn, so... Presumably, I assume the Age of Slush is not Lysander it up. Correct. Which is probably what, if you're curious what you want to do, put him down to a Zorark only on the field, and... At the moment, he doesn't have a good way to deal with the Glade either, because he was charging up on Age Slash instead of being able to draw into a Genesect and Metal Links to that. As Age Slash is almost never going to be enough energy to one-shot a Glade. And there we go, see. yeah, we see the knockout there. He's taking, it looks like a Giovanni yeah. Scheme and a DCE. And that's going to actually be very interesting, because he'll be able to have that additional 20 damage, and if he hits the target whistle, he might actually be turning around to be able to yeah. start one-shotting some of these big EXs. Yes, yeah. and that's one of the huge things, is like, a lot of the wise of Deals do play cards like you know, Giovanni's scheme, because, you know, the draw five is not bad. Not bad. Like, you know, especially when you're, when you have this thing where you're playing the unknowns and you're playing the puzzle, you're, you want to keep, you're, you have cantrips on your bench. Right. So you're going to be able to draw these extra cards anyways. So you don't mind only drawing five because you're really going to end up drawing six or seven or eight. And then the plus one damage is great in a lot of situations. Right. And it's just a very flexible card. And again, we see, I think Edward values a lot having like a consistent deck that's relatively flexible with the puzzles and everything. Did you see it? They were making fun of me. Oh, oh. Um, I went to look and my hair. So. We're back. We see that Kiernan hits a float zone and a bronze on break. And the bronze on break's pretty nice here as it's. All of a sudden, becomes tough to KO. Because if you're if you're Edward, ideally what you wanted your game plan to be was to Lysander up this Shaman, KO it with pretty much anything that breathes on it, and then KO a Bronzong because that's going to be easier to KO than an Age of Slash. This is actually very interesting. How many energy does he have on the Bronzong? Because is he going to snipe on the Unknowns and I, take prize cards that way? Uh, potentially, but I don't think he has any energy on Bronzong yet. I uh, think. Okay, I wasn't sure if it, it's kind yeah, of. Yeah, it looks like it's a Bronzong break, a Bronzong, a Bronzong, and then a Float Stone. Okay. Okay. Okay, so it's going to take a lot of energy for him to, to so do that. he's looking to Metal Links to his bench and then yeah, promote he, something. Yeah, he's going to be able so to... Actually, oh, so he oh, actually... He, 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 hit ma he had several Max Elixirs this turn. So, like, I I may be proven wrong that an Age of Slash can't yeah, watch Shadow Glide. Thanks, Kieran. Okay, 40, 60, 80, 100. Oh, wow. He is 100%. That's what he's going for. Wow, and he hit a, a lot of Max... Wow. He's in a position right now that... If, uh, Edward doesn't knock out this Age of Slash. He's just gonna keep bulldozing through okay. Edward's Pokemon so, here. Yeah, the thing is, is okay. Now, Edward's not in a happy place. It, I don't know how many targets he's played, but all right. Oh, that's huge. Right, so he hits Druddy God. Now that's actually very big here because oh, I still doesn't get that Bronzong knock out. Okay. So what he really wants to do right now is he wants to find a way to K. Is he wants to find a target whistle? Because mm -hmm. right now his win condition at the moment is. Target Whistle, like, something I can actually KO. Right. So, a bron he wants to Target Whistle, a Bronzor, Bench, Druddy Yeah, that's what he's going to do. Oh, he's got the Lysander. Now, does he have an energy? All right, this is key. So, he is able to KO the Shaman. He is able to take He'll get down to one prize. Cards. He'll be down to two prize cards left. No. Okay, yeah. Oh, he, he, has, oh, he, he has, has four. He has oh, four that's huge. Oh, yeah, yeah. Kieran's got three. Okay, I didn't see that compressor, like, hiding under our insignia. 
Alright, so this is, uh, yeah, he's not happy right now. I don't... Yeah, he's gonna... He's still gonna go ahead and take the knockout for yeah, the Yeah, I don't actually think... I don't actually think he can win. I... Uh, his... You, he just... You... This deck cannot beat an Age of Slash. It really just depends if... Edward does get the target whistle and get target whistle a shaman to knock it out. Yeah, that's, that's about that's, that's his, his that's his goal. But he use but he used the Druddy on this turn instead of using the Zorark. So he doesn't have a way to do 110 damage to one shot the shaman now. Uh if he what he's looking at if he can target whistle to the bench. Right, so if he puzzles and gets the target oh, whistle oh, a couple yeah, times. Yeah, he's got I mean he's like that's the lot, direction yeah. that he's gonna he has no other choice yeah. at this point. But right. he well, too. what he could have done is he could have, uh, what, what in my opinion he could have done was attach that DC to that Zorark, and then use the Zorark to KO the Shaman, and then you saw that Dragon doing 90 and 110. That's true. Like, he was still going to take Because he's got the energies flowing, right. He's got the energies flowing, so keep that Dragon safe, because that's what we're saying here, is you want to time that Dragon and use as your last thing, because again, the deck has a hard time doing damage by itself. It kind of needs help in a way. Mm -hmm. So if he just attached the Dark to the Zorark, and, you know, Lysander, KO the Shaman with the Zorark, and then you... Bench the you still probably you still bench the Drudion because you want to have it on board because you're gonna need right. it. And if you life centers it, you know you deal fan you're a little upset. But now you're in a position where you need to hit a lot more puzzles to do things because at that point he would only need to hit the double puzzle once to get the DCE to get the Lysander and the target whistle back to get the shame. Now he needs to do a lot of weird things and He's looking to he's actually so he's all right, so she alright, so he's looking to he's 70 looking to knock out the Age of Slash. He's gonna try to put some chip damage on it this turn, yeah, and then knock it out next turn. But all it takes is if Kieran does get a way to AZ that up. Right. Then but if he AZs it up, it's a lot less of a threat because he's only got the one bronze on the board. So, like, he's not, he doesn't have a lot, uh, but he's got the bronze on, which just does 90 like anyway. He's going to just meta links to the bronze on and start trying to. Uh, he's just going to, I think he's going to, uh, so it looks like he's going to snipe away the Zorark this turn. If he wants to, he can do that if he wants to. Yeah. Nope, he's going to He's going to take the knockout on the Evil Tall. Uh, so now we get to see, can he, is there a way for him to actually win this game? Alright, uh, so he needs, uh, okay, so for him to win, he needs to do 100 damage to this. He's currently doing 40, so he needs double target whistle. That, that's and what he needs. And he's used two puzzle of times already, I believe, so maybe he has two left. Yeah, I also, so he's, he's he, I also don't him. know if he's playing multiple targets, so I have not actually been keeping oh, track. So so he does play. So no, he's, he's talking about the puzzle. Okay. Time. So yeah, can he win here? I don't think so. Is he BS seekering? He's deciding. He's currently doing the forty damage. So he's going to actually. Is he choosing to end? I'm just gonna compress her. Let's see what's what's in there. Yeah, he has no he win has conditions. Nothing. There's yeah, nothing that's that game. Really so, uh, yeah, he, he sees that. that so Kieran's gonna take that. Yeah, he was in a tough spot. The, his best out there would have been if he could have. Yeah, I don't think he had any outs. He's, he, he was he just really. Can't he was gonna. He was gonna need. He only had four cards left, and he really needed about 